Hi everyone, welcome to the first lecture of Module 9 of Useful Genetics. In this lecture, we're going to revisit the concept of heritability that we introduced back in Module 5. Then we were really only interested in its meaning in the context of genome-wide association studies, but here we're going to look at it in much more depth. First, thinking about why it matters and what factors limit the meaning of the concept and our ability to understand it. And then in the next lecture, we'll think about how we can measure it. So heritability is the proportion of a population's phenotypic variation that's due to genetic variation. It's how big a difference difference in genes make to the phenotypes of the individuals in a population. Heritability is really important for a number of reasons. First, Natural selection is entirely dependent on the existence of heritable variation that affects phenotypes. And so we need to understand heritability of any trait whose evolution we're interested in. Heritability also predicts the effects of breeding programs. If we want to breed livestock for better meat or milk production, or crops for better yield or better ability to survive, difficult conditions, we need to know how heritable the trait we're working on is. If it's not very heritable, the breeding program is going to be very difficult. Heritability determines how we study human traits and what we can do about them. Heritability raises many ethical and social issues when we think about it, especially in humans. The concept of nature versus nurture and captures this problem. To what extent are our behaviors, our social interactions, um, our crimes even, a response of um, factors that are controlled by genes that we inherited rather than our environment. This strongly determines what kinds of social interventions we might think are appropriate. Heritability also underlay pretty much everything we discussed in Module 5. We talked about how natural alleles can cause differences in phenotype. Um, we talked about how many genes contribute to differences in any particular trait, and how each of the genes effects is often very small. We talked about how interactions between alleles and between loci complicate their effects on phenotype, and how both environment factors that can be controlled, and chance factors that can't be controlled contribute to differences. All of this, understanding all of this, depends on being able to study the heritability of the traits. Heritability, by definition, is a property of a population, not of an individual. So we can only talk about heritability in the context of a large population that we study. Within this population, the variation between individuals in their phenotypes is, to a certain extent, due to variation in their genotypes. We can't talk about variation in phenotypes or genotypes in an individual. Heritability depends critically on how the trait is defined. For example, genome-wide association studies into autism depend very much on what definition of autism the researchers use. Using a classic definition of autism identifies one set of genes. Using a more modern definition of what's called autism spectrum disorders, including mi more mild um, psychiatric problems, will identify a larger group of genes. Um, most of the genes that are identified in classic autism will also be identified in a study of autism spectrum, but some won't. Heritability depends on the population that's being studied, and that's because different populations typically don't have exactly the same alleles or the same proportions of alleles in the population. And so the effects on phenotype will depend on which alleles are present. In one population, there may be only a, alleles causing a small amount of variation in the trait, whereas in another population, the effect must, might be much bigger because there are 
alleles present or alleles in higher frequencies that have stronger effects on the trait. Finally, the heritability of a trait depends critically on the specific environment. Um, if environments differ, then even if we're considering two genetically identical populations, the effects of the environment will cause the heritabilities to be different. So in the stable environment, we have, for in this diagram, 45% heritability. But in the variable environment, the heritability is only 25%, even though the two populations are genetically identical. So we've defined heritability again. We've considered why it matters, and we've considered the limitations on our ability to estimate heritability. So our estimates of heritability are always estimates. We never can exactly know heritability, and they're always very contingent on how the estimation was done. Coming up next, we're going to talk about how, in fact, we can estimate the heritability of a trait. I hope to see you there.